Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to the first edition of the, well, in a long time, of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, the meteorologist DT from weatherist.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. We're going to talk about weather this week and lots to talk about um, in this upcoming edition. I know it's the first one in a long time, but uh, had some things which need to take a break from and uh, we redo the format and some other projects I've been working on, but uh, we should be good to go now. And we'll be going with the This Week in Weather forecast, these formats, every day now up until uh, right through the winter. Um, Maybe Sunday nights, and uh, maybe a Monday afternoon. We'll wait and see how the world will work out, but usually beginning of the week. All right, let's get right to it. And this, uh, this, this edition of This Week in Weather, a couple of different topics. We'll talk about June and July 2014. We'll talk about the next two weeks. We'll talk about the hurricane season 2014. What the hell's going on? We'll talk about the possible return of El Nino, uh, the autumn forecast 2014, and a caution about all these stupid winter forecasts, which have already been issued by various different websites and uh, weenies around the internet who are already trying to dr drum up business and scare you and overdo the hype. Uh, of course, these were the same people which totally missed the forecast last year, but let's ignore that fact, okay? So let's get right to it. First, we'll take a look at uh, the uh, these are uh, the uh, temperatures here for uh, June for July. And we can see again uh, the temperatures. The one on the map on the left hand side is July 2009, and you can see how amazingly cool it was throughout all of the uh, Midwest and the Northeast, but mainly the Midwest, the Upper Plains. That purple area on the left hand side here, that's uh, you know that represents a, a, a right up in this area right in here. That's uh, you know minus look at that uh, minus eight minus nine in here and then this is uh, July 2014 and the same sort of similar thing not quite as identically a cold but still uh, very impressive and uh, uh, you know uh, very this trend is continuing now if we look at uh, again the departure from the temperatures here we can see uh, just an enlargement of the same map generally 2009 versus 2000. Very impressive. Now, this was a June of precipitation. In case you did not notice, a June was a very wet month across most of the Upper Plains, the Central Plains, the uh, Upper Midwest, dry in the southeast and over Texas, and of course the drought in the southwest. And that's important because the soil moisture getting into the ground to keep, to keep the pattern quite wet. It, it keeps the trough over the Midwest. And this is July. Of course, July turned out to be very, very dry. And uh, but it was a cool month, as we know. And that's important for the agricultural concerns, because normally when you get this sort of dryness in July over Kansas, all the way to Montana and North Dakota and Minnesota and into Illinois, you have a, a crops which are in trouble. Uh, but as we know, the temperatures were quite cool for July, so that really has not been a problem. And that's so far here in August, the first 15 days, we've had some areas remain quite dry in Minnesota and eastern Iowa, Wisconsin, other areas in significant rain. Uh, so it's been back and forth. Now, as we go out into the future here over the next seven days, the European ensemble, as you can see, shows significant rains all up in this whole area. You can see this very nicely. You're really Big rains coming in, even into Virginia, looks like, in West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and that's significant. And um, uh, uh, the week two forecast uh, from the GFS here, same sort of thing. It's got a lot of rain over the Midwest and the southeastern coast, as you can see. Um, very impressive, significant rain. So this is a wet pattern developing here as we go into August. There's no in the second half of August here. And the Canadian looks very similar. Again, lots of rain on the East Coast, some rain, and more significant rain concentrated over the heart of the Midwest and South Central Canada. Canada. Now, what's happening here is the GFS, uh, as this is the day seven GFS, and uh, what I wanted to point out here is a couple things. First, we have this ridge developing here, as you can see, but that ridge is in response to this trough. So the GFS develops a trough here in the ridge, and that produces a lot of heat into the lower Midwest, west, the deep south. And then, of course, once this feature gets out of here, this ridge gets a chance to expand, and it turn, everybody turns hot according to the GFS. That's what the operational run is showing. But as we uh, go down to the next page here, and this is the, uh, I believe this is the uh, GFS uh, uh, ensemble also for uh, day seven. It's a little different. It's got the trough a little further to the east and the ridge isn't quite as strong. Um, and most of the models agree with that. But uh, what happens is the GFS, that, as you go out into, into 11 to 15 day, oh, let me call this up here, it still keeps this trough right here. You see that? And we still have the ridge here. And so it gets very warm in this whole area. Uh, that's what the GFS is doing. This is the operational run. Now, remember, this is the operational okay, GFS we're looking at here, right? Okay. As we go past that, 
we look at the ensembles, we see something significantly different. Now, the European ensemble, as you can see, has the mean trough sliding it here into the eastern United States very nicely, as you can see that. And uh, the ridge has now gone this way, out, out to sea. The ridge kind of flattens out a little bit here, as you can see that. So, uh, and that's very nice. Uh, if we look at the uh, GFS ensemble in the 11 to 15 day, uh, we can see that the GFS very much agrees with the uh, European. The trough is, um, it's, remember it had the trough, I guess it had it here. That's no longer the case. The trough, as you can see, is now here in the middle portion of the country. So that's a very close match to the superior European and the Canadian models. I right, let's take a look at the hurricane C-14. Now, it's more than just dust out there. We have a cold, cold sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we're having awful rainfall season in southwest Africa. A very weak monsoon in India. I know some of you saying, what does the monsoon in India have to do with anything? We'll talk about that. And sinking air, a lot of uh, 200 negative uh, 200 millibar vertical velocities, which are crushing everything. Very much like the problem we had last year. Uh, this is the dust, as you can see. This was the disturbance that came off a few days ago off Africa. But you can see there's a massive dust cloud that reaches all the way towards Puerto Rico. And I guess even a dust now in Miami, according to some of the reports that I'm seeing. Very impressive dust. Now, why is the dust so strong this year? Well, before we get to that, let's take a look at some of the sea surface temperatures. This is from uh, late July, as you can see here. And let me call up my marker so we can see what we're talking about. Look at the cold water here. Good googly moogly. Now, there's your warm water in the Pacific, and you can see that. But look at this very, very cold stuff. This is July, as you can see. Uh, the next map will take us. Uh, this is uh, mid-August here, August 12th here. Same sort of thing. Look at the cold uh, temperature. Look at that cold water here in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. There's our negative PDO, super warm water here in the northeastern Pacific, the Gulf of Alaska, and then off of China. We'll talk about that a little bit if, you're necessary, if you have the time. But you can see a lot of cold water in the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, no sign that this is changing. And if we look at the latest maps here from Storm Vista, and you can see again, uh, we look at the water temperatures here. Um, this is as of August 16th. You can see really quite uh, no warmth here. Not cold as it was, but certainly not warm at all. Warmer in the subtropical Atlantic, interestingly enough. And if we look at the trends, it's staying cold. Yeah, look at these trends over the last 14 days, folks. It's getting colder here. It's not warming up at all. Look at the Gulf. Getting colder here. Yikes. That's that's not a good sign for hurricane season. Not good in August. And look at the rainfall. This is from July 1st to July 31st. This is the prevent rainfall. Uh, as you, this is from one of the uh, climate prediction center sites. A lot of you don't use this African stuff out there, but you know when you trade and you're doing grain weather all around the world, you have to look at the stuff all the time. And what you can see here, and the, this is useful. This is again, this is rainfall percentage of normal. Okay, and let's look at this in July. This is South Africa, South Africa here, where the you know, tropical waves come across this way. There's your Cape Verde Islands. You see that? So there, this is pretty dry stuff. Look at this down in here. That's not impressive. That's not good rainfall. No, 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 that's not good at all. This is July, this last 30 days, rainfall anomalies. Look at this stuff. This is way below normal. <laughs> Look at that. Total rainfall anomalies. Uh, that's uh, 50, 100, 150 millimeters in some places. That's not good rain for Southwest Africa. And that, that's, of course, that's producing a lot of dust. If you look at the actual rainfall uh, in the last week, again, you can see some areas have sat uh, 50 to 100 millimeters, but some areas are pretty dry. So it's very hit and miss. It's not a very good rainfall. And again, if you look at rainfall relative to normal over the last week in Africa, sure, this is good in here. OK, but down here is pretty dry. So, again, this is very, you know, hit and miss, very up and down, not very, not a strong signal here at all. So there's some tropical wave activity, but it's not very good. That's my whole point here. Now let's look at the Indian monsoon. Now this is the last seven days. You can see the monsoon has really dried up again. They had a severely delayed monsoon in June and early July before it finally got cranking, and now it's breaking down again. And this is the last 30 days. You can see we had some rain here in the middle portions of India, but it dropped out. And over the next 30 days, the next uh, week three here, this is the CFS, and you can see it turns pretty dry here in India once again and, uh, and here. Now, the reason why that's important, because these strong monsoon waves come across equatorial Africa and then help feed the, uh, you know, these waves coming through equatorial Africa and become Cape Verde systems. So if, the, if, if India is dry, you don't get a lot of wave activity. A lot of East Africa, which means equatorial Africa is weak, which means Southwest Africa is weak, and so on and so on and so forth. It's pretty interesting how all weather is connected, isn't it? Okay, so, and this is China. Look how dry China has been as well. Very big drought in the last 30 days in China over the, uh, nor the North China Plain in Manchuria. Now, 
let's talk about these scenario here going on here with this. This is from last year. This is July 23rd. Look at the date here, folks. Let me call this up. You can see it, right? It's July, okay. But again, this is Dorian, which developed off the African coast, but the brown stuff is sinking air. See all the brown stuff? That's sinking air. And what's happened is that suppresses activity. So it's all moving from west to east, from left to right. So if we look at the next map here, this is August of 2013. And again, we had a little development off of the coast of Africa, but it ran into this brown stuff that was coming through this way again the brown stuff is coming in here this stuff is all sinking air and it crushes it crushes all the activity so your tropical waves your tropical depressions cannot develop that's what it was doing last year and this is august 23rd of last year and again look at all the stuff in the eastern atlantic ocean a lot of activity in here very positive air this is good stuff great stuff here as well but in the main in the atlantic ocean look at this nothing Nothing, zero, sinking air, brown stuff, killing all the systems, suppressing all the tropical development. And this is August 2013. Again, you can see the same sort of thing. So now let's take a look. Here's July 2014. Again, we all know how busy the eastern Pacific Ocean has been. Look at this super stuff in here. Look at all this stuff. Look how massive, super, super rising air in here and in here as well, getting a lot of hurricanes. But in the main development region, <laughs> nothing, brown sinking air crushing it all right this is august 5th no development there absolutely none this is august 11th a little tropical wave this was a 95 94 95l which came off the coast of africa a couple of days ago boom it runs into the brown stuff it's dead nothing's happening and look at all the brown stuff over india again the sinking air and this is august 14th nothing what we need to get the hurricanes really cranking here is you need to get this green stuff into the Atlantic Ocean. And so far, it's not moving. It's not moving. It's staying there. Now, if we look at the forecast models, this is uh, from the folks at the Tropical Tidbits, uh, Levi Cowan, great guy there. Uh, you can see the sinking air over the next week. Look at India, sinking air, no rain. Look at China, no rain, the drought developing there. Tons of rain in the eastern Pacific Ocean, lots of hurricanes there, nothing going on in the Atlantic, not much. And if we look at week two, look at that sinking air. This is August 27th here. Uh, I guess this would be a, a, a 10 days out from now, yeah. You can see the sinking air in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. Not a lot of activity there. Maybe something developing in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico and more sinking air over China, India, suppressing the development of tropical activity there. And this is now 360 hours out, September 1st. Sinking air, look at this, folks, right here. Not good. That's going to crush the Cape Verde hurricane season. Uh, lots of rain coming up here for South America, potentially. And look at the sinking air in China, India again hurting their monsoons there significantly. So, again, not very looking good. And now, if you look at the El Nino, again, this is how strong it looked back on March 9th. You can see how strong the uh, what the uh, the conditions were. Look at how powerful the warm water was. This is July 27th. It completely collapsed. So that you're thinking, okay, the El Nino is done, right? It's over and done with. Well, not necessarily, because what's happened is we can look at the, the trend going on here. This is um, uh, July 17th. You see that? Okay. And then this here is August 11th. See this? Now look at the new water developing here. All the warm water that was here, that's gone. But this warm water is developing. So that might be a new trend developing in the uh, El Nino. This is the Motokai, which is developed by the Japanese. This shows when the El Nino develops out in the Central Pacific Ocean, not across, across South America. And there's another example of it. This is the typical El Nino here. And this is a Motokai here, where the warm water is out to the middle of portion of the, of the uh, equatorial region. And that's important because uh, let me, let, let's look at 2009. We remember that great winter? This is October 2009. Where is the warm water? Off the coast of South America, as you can see right here. Okay? But look what happened a month, uh, two months later in December. The warm water developed here here but again this is october and december not august not july which is why the forecasts don't work out for those months because it's too far ahead of time and let's take a look at august 2014. remember what happened to drove the pattern last winter was this feature which developed in the gulf of alaska this is november 26 on the left hand side january 2nd it developed in november not in august not in july not september november okay now if we look at all the pdos where if we assume the PDO uh, holds and it continues, uh, what does that look like for September? The PDO pattern continues. Cool September, very cold October. Wow, that's impressive. The EPO has been trending negative. It continues to run negative. And if we, that holds, look at these temperatures for September and October relative to normal. Very cold over the Midwest, the upper plains of Midwest, relative to normal. Impressive cold. 
if that happens, if that happens. And the MEI it remains strongly positive, as you can see the bottom of the graph there. And again, if you look at the MEI temperatures, very seasonally cool in, in September, but October is very cold indeed. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.